Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Agave Talk, your number one source for everything agave. We appreciate you being here with us today. Today we're checking out Gran Coralejo Añejo. I mean, I, I got the box and everything. I have to apologize. You guys know I moved studios a few months back. We are now living in Lima, Peru. And uh, just kind of my setup. It, it's not even enough to get this giant box in. There's still about maybe like another inch above <laughs> that's out of the shot. But still, you know what? You get the gist of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with us today. I mean, living in Lima, Peru, we're still bringing you the greatest selection of brands across any social media. So thank you for being with us, all right? We do this for you, and we do this for the love of agave spirits. Like today, this Gran Corarejo uh, Añejo. Yes, yes, yes. This is from Tequila Corralejo. If you do follow the channel um, or just are a fan of tequila, Corralejo is kind of like a long skinny bottle, right? Go check that out. Go Google that. So why is this a big giant crown? Well, this is their creme de la creme, but what's unique is that it's not even an extra Añejo. No, this is an Añejo. It's aged for a minimum of two years. We're about to go in, you know, some of the the story behind this bottle because it's actually a reason why it looks like that crown. So super cool stuff. The marketing on this, the packaging on this is super premium, but it's so unique that, you know, normally many brands, they save the fancy bottles and fancy packaging for their extra añejos, but Corralejo actually made it for this. But again, there's a reason for that and we are about to check out why. But first and foremost, I wanted to share and showcase this box. This bottle is actually sitting inside of it. Uh, there is a top, that's what I can't get into the shot. And uh, looking at the bottom, just a barcode. This is a one liter bottle, so not a 750, and it is huge, it is beautiful, and we are about to open this bad boy up. So let me do that, um, just so we can truly see the bottle as well as I'm talking, uh, but also too, because there is a lot on this box that I need to review and share as well. But to do that, you know what, just looking at the box, let's let the anticipation stop and open this bad boy up. Um, at the top, it's kind of like some pull tabs. Let me see if you can see. It's kind of like some pull tabs and it's not the easiest. This is definitely an older box and uh, they really secured this down tight. So opening this up, ta-da, it's right there. Just kind of flapping around. I have seen this with uh, like a bag. It comes in like a felt bag, kind of like uh, a whiskey brand does, if you know what I'm talking about. But this right here, oh, let me get that out of the way and get that into the shot. Gran Corralejo. Yes, yes, yes. Super cool, super unique bottle. Um, this bottle is, I mean, just look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Coming out of NOM 1368, the Corralejo Distillery. Um, this is just something else. All right. So to get into it, why, 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 why is this a shape of a, can anybody guess? I mean, looks kind of busty, right? Maybe, maybe a, a bousier, brosse, like, I don't know. How do you, how do you say that? Any of my French people out there, right? But, <laughs> but it's not, all right, get your mind out of the gutter. This is actually a crown. This is a crown, guys. I mean, you can even see up here with the bottle stopper. This is wild. Um, this is a limited production tequila. There's only 2,000 cases ever made of this stuff, all right? So not 2,000 bottles, 2,000 cases, okay? So let me get this in here and let me get that there as well. Uh, 2,000 cases. So if you think of maybe like bottles of wine, typically they come in, uh, a case comes with 12 bottles. This right here, I mean, I'm not sure if they're fitting 12 bottles of this packaging in a case maybe there's only six eight not sure but 2,000 cases worldwide so it's not like super super exclusive you can see this and I have seen this in many places uh, but not many of people have ever actually tried it um, and if I have seen it uniquely enough it's usually like somewhere in the back just kind of collecting dust I'm not sure if people don't know what to make of it, uh, but we are about to open this bad boy up and try together. 
because it is completely sealed. I am a fan of Corralejo, but this offering, believe it or not, I have never tasted. So I am super excited for this right now. Um, again, it is that 2000 case limited production, and it is actually in a replica of an 18th century Spanish royal crown. So again, interesting, right? And, and this video uh, right now, I'm letting you know it's going to be a little long. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff we need to read, translate, and again, just kind of share and show the significance behind what goes into not only just making juice, but also making bottles and pieces of art with stories that go along with it. So I know some people might you know, ah, bottles, fancy bottles this, and fancy bottles that, it's terrible, even if the juice inside is not good, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great, yeah, we get it. We drink and prefer high quality craft made tequila, traditional stuff, traditional values, absolutely, right? I want my agave to taste like agave. However, I'm a huge fan of art as well, and I find it really dope that many uh, brands do incorporate art into their juice, regardless of what it tastes. So super excited for this, and I've always wanted this in the collection, just never bought it, right? But um, I said, man, you know what? I found this recently on my last trip to uh, Cancun and said, you know what, man, let me bring it back to Lima because I guarantee nobody has this here. But even to looking across social media, you're not seeing this, all right? You're only seeing this here on Agave Talk. All right, <laughs> thank you for being with us. So this right here, it represents a replica of the 18th century Spanish royal crown, all right? And thinking about that, uh, the distillery of Corralejo, Hacienda Corralejo, was one of the very first estates in Mexico to produce commercial tequila, right? So in 1755, they actually started producing tequila, which is kind of crazy, almost 250 years ago. Um, they've been, you know, defining, developing the craft for sure. And again, just kind of the respect for these families, you know. Tequila Corralejo has been doing this for so long that in 1994, 1994, the president of Mexico, the president asked Don Leonardo the, of Corralejo Distillery uh, to produce 2,000 cases of an aged Don Viejo to toast in a new millennium, right? And shout out to Old Town Tequila. I'm reading this off your website. Thank you for the information. So the president of Mexico asked Hacienda Corralejo to produce a tequila that they wanted to use to toast in the new millennium, the year 2000. So Don Leonardo named the edition, this limited edition, Gran Corralejo to indicate it as Corralejo's finest reserve tequila. So again, going back to that, right? Like usually the highest offering, the finest, most like prized um, uh, expressions are usually those extra añejos because of how long it takes to age them. But Corralejo said, you know what? This right here, the grand, this añejo of a minimum of two years is our finest offering. And that's why even like, you know, all the fancy bottle and stuff like that. So they are aging this in select French limousine oak barrels with a medium char. Um, and to symbolize Mexico's rich, long, rich history with tequila and to showcase it as a spirit of the kings, right? They designed this crown-shaped bottle, uh, which was also designed to highlight a time in history when tequila, the town of tequila, right? Where there's, you know, many distilleries. The town of tequila was first presented to the Spaniards by the region's natives. Spaniards came over, brought distillation with them. You know, the natives presented, this is our land. And uh, again, just so much history into this bottle. So then that's where, you know, when we hear some tequila snobs, some tequila purists, some tequila people where, oh, it's, it's not this, it's not that. Oh, it's just a fancy bottle. Like, yeah, you're right, the bottle's fancy. And regardless of if the juice has additives inside, uh, regardless of the process, yes, I get it. And I prefer traditionally well-made tequilas, but you got to tip off your hat and give respect even to, um, to some of the backstories of these bottles, to why some of these bottles look fancy, and also just the history 
of Mexico itself. Because again, this right here, regardless of what this tastes like, and again, I have no idea. We're about to taste this together. You know, you gotta give the respect. You have to give respect to why this bottle looks the way it does. And uh, hats off to Corralejo for that, all right? So super cool, president of Mexico asked them, let's produce a bottle for the new millennium to ring it in, went to this distillery, and this is what they came up with. Cool, cool, cool. So like I said, Hacienda Corralejo, NOM1368. This is a one liter bottle, Añejo in French limousine oak barrels, medium char. I'm trying to find the ABV on this, and I do not see it because, um, and the reason I, oh, there we go. <laughs> Giant, right? 38%. <laughs> so that's what I was about to say. I'm sure it's 38% because I actually purchased this again last time I was in Cancun. Um, and you could tell because I found that uh, with this, you know, it has this uh, sticker, like a regulatory sticker. You will see this on all bottles purchased in Mexico. Um, even up here as well, we have it all sealed. And uh, this is saying like, this is the best Lo mejor de Mexico, right? Like this is the best in Mexico right now. And um, shout out to Gran Corralejo, Tequila Corralejo. Uh, you know what? We are fans. We, we always keep a bottle of your stuff around. And uh, we do have a video, guys, of the Extra Añejo, the Traveler's Edition, exclusive. You're not finding that anywhere except duty-free airport shops. Uh, check out that link somewhere up there. I'm gonna put it up there. All right, check that out. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's move this over because like I said, there was a lot to discuss and I want to share and show the box. So even the branding on the box, right? Uh, this, let me bring this down. It says right here, and I'm gonna have to translate a lot of this, okay guys? So they're actually bringing in, when they're saying drinking this expression, um, you have to use your five senses. And what that states right there, says five senses, uh, a way to taste the best tequila, right? So they're giving you the way to taste the best tequila. And translating that out, let me see if I could get it standing up. No, and I don't wanna move the camera, right? So bear with me, you'll have to read sideways. <laughs> it says, tasting is done through sensory analysis and aims to identify the different organoleptic, the sense organs, right? Organoleptic uh, characteristics of tequila, analyze and interpret them. So you're using your different senses uh, to really explore the characteristics of the tequila, analyze them and interpret them for sure. Uh, this tasting experience, I'm down here now, the tasting experience is a synthesis of the ancient process of making tequila where the taster refines the five senses to perceive all the characteristics that distinguish the flavor of Corralejo and its history. Super cool, super cool, super cool. Uh, Corralejo itself, even cooler, uh, The where they're harvesting and getting the agaves for this expression is actually nowhere in Guadalajara. No, typically Guadalajara, town of tequila, Jalisco, stuff like that, right? That's where a lot of the tequila is getting their agaves. Uh, for this, it's actually a state-grown agaves in the state of uh, Guanajuato. Guanajuato, all right? Just a little bit to the north-south-east, to the east of Guadalajara, right? Go check that out on the map. So super cool. Uh, let's get into the senses. So they start off with um, sight, right? Uh, where am I? Where am I? There we go. They start off with sight. So as you're about to drink a tequila, first of all, you gotta look at it. And that's why we end up showing you the legs and tears of every tequila we pour. And we talk about the color because it is a full sensory experience and one of your five senses is sight. So it says, the color of our product is lost in its depth compared to the blue agave fields of the sky, of the sea, of the dreams. The blue that distinguishes the birth of a man in the family in the family Corralejo. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm for hire. If you guys need me to narrate anything, I'm there. <laughs> but this, all right, we're talking, you know, that's, that's some like really profound kind of stuff right there. Um, for us here, hey, you gotta look at it, guys. Look at that color um, and look at the legs and tears. How does this stick to the glass? You know, can you see through it? How deep is that color? If it's only age about two years, you know, um, 
think about the char on the barrel. Can you see through it? Can you not? A lot of, lot of stuff you can get from being visual, okay? Um, up here, we have smell. We have smell. The nose, olfactory, right? Uh, that smell, let me bring this in. Already in the glass, you can enjoy its woody smell from the thyme in the barrels as well as the full range of tones from vanilla and cinnamon to the soft aroma of cooked agave. A delight to the demanding palate. So curious, okay, vanilla, cinnamon. You could definitely get that um, from barrel aging and I hope not from additives, all right? But we shall see, we shall see, we shall see. So definitely smell, huge, huge factor along with sight um, in tasting and experiencing uh, tequila. Now this is kind of interesting because tacto, tactile, touch, right? Do you touch your tequila? I mean, am I like sticking my finger in there and swirling it around? No, however, you actually can. And to touch a tequila, you can actually feel the oils and then you can smell it on your hand. Highly recommend doing that sometimes. Uh, maybe consider pouring it onto your hand instead of sticking your finger in. Unless you wash your hands, all right? Hey, do you, it is what it is, no judgment. So tactile, the translation. <laughs> Holding a bottle of Corralejo in your hands gives you the feeling of having a scepter, a trophy in your hands, right? A trophy. Uh, and which produces feelings of power, strength, triumph, and the joy of celebration. So they're talking more about the bottle, right? So like taking this bottle, physically having this, like it is kind of cool. Like this is a centerpiece. It is a showcase. And imagine bringing this out and handing it to somebody or somebody hands it to you and you're like, whoa, the first thing you're doing, absolutely. You're looking around, you're touching the knobs on here, super tactile, like you're going to move this bottle around and it's going to feel, it's heavy. It really is heavy, right? And it's a leader, but you're going to feel like, wow, this is something special. It's going to be an experience, right? So touch for sure, for sure. Not just, um, you know, the juice inside, sticking your fingers in, but also the bottles for sure as well. Let me get that out of the way. Uh, the last two senses and going in sound, right? So we have sound, oido, audio, right? Uh, oido, uh, checking that out, the audio or sound, when a bottle of Cordalejo is uncorked, the sounds that awaken the ear begin. Although it is a sound of tasting with friends that leads to the joy of a special moment, sharing life, friendship, love, and tequila. So this is dope. Why do you think every single video we say, let your bottles pop, and then we open it? That cork sound. Um, it is, it's kind of like, like Pavlov, right? You, you're clicking the bell, that chime. As soon as that bottle pops, it's like, oh yeah, something's about to go down. And then also too, as you're drinking, uh, not only is it the sound of laughter, love, joy, hopefully, hopefully, all right, drink responsibly and with positive people, but also too, you can swish around the glass, right? You can hear it and you know a great time is about to be had. So last but not least of our five senses, con gusto, all right, with taste. This is our taste and probably one of the most important um, it is a tequila that should be taken without mixing to preserve its quality and enjoy its authentic flavor that is smooth with a strong character and a great body, only comparable to a beautiful woman, right? <laughs> so again, I mean, just kind of like the experience we're going on, the details that went into this, super cool, super enjoyable. Um, and of course, you know, taste probably the number one, you got to taste your stuff. But the reality is, is that taste is so much more than just putting something to your mouth. It really is the sound of something. It is the touch and the, uh, the nose, the smell, and also the sight, right? Because when all of those powers combine, I am a cool looking tequila that hopefully tastes pretty good, all right? So I am about to open this bad boy up. Enough, enough, enough of me just going on and talking and talking about this. But if you have stuck around with us, we appreciate you. Um, if you just skipped forward to the tasting, hey, go back and learn something, all right? Go back, check that out, go learn. <laughs> but yeah, I am about to open this up. I need to see exactly how I might need to cut this. Um... Or I can, because it's not like perforated at all. 
All right, I might need to go get a knife, unfortunately. And if I do, I'm going to have, oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, no, I got it. No, I didn't. All right. Guys, you know we like to just do these things in one take, so you are here with us, but I am going to need to go get a knife real quick. So give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, and we are back. I was able to get the plastic off. Um, this right here is uh, still connected, but if I just move it to the side, we are going to let our bottles pop. Oh, yeah. Remember that sound. Oof, that was a huge, deep pop. Uh, this crown right here, right, the topper um, is just, uh, it's just um, uh, plastic. That's all it is, all right? All it is is plastic, and we have our paper here. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Nice little cork in there. I'm gonna put this to the side and pour this bad boy out. If you have not done so already, please. Oh my God, this is heavy. Hold on. If you have not done so already, please hit that like and subscribe as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. Oh man, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. This is something I've always wanted to try. And now I'm stoked because I have one for the collection. So super cool, super cool, super cool. But uh, taking a look at this, man, oh man, oh man. That is a deep, dark color. And those legs and tears really, let me get that into shot if I can. There we go, ish, yeah. Uh, the legs on tears on that, that's pretty sticky. There you go. You can see it right there, right? That's pretty sticky. Pretty sticky. Uh, definitely deep, dark, dark color right there. Um, Coralejo is saying it is aged a minimum of two years in French limousine oak uh, barrels. Um, <clears throat> how long exactly, they do not say. But you know what? That is pretty dark. If it was over three years, it would be an extra añejo. So it is not. It is still just an añejo, right? Um, man, let's uh, let's. You know, I'm not gonna stick my fingers in here, but I can hear it swishing around. <laughs> let's take a smell. Remember using those five senses, right? So we use that uh, sight. I'm now going to use smell. Wow. Oh man, that smells amazing. Definitely a lot of wood. I know it's saying the wood, I believe the information before was saying like a subtle wood. Mm. With a medium char, like definitely getting some wood on there more than just subtle. It's not like super overpowering, but it's definitely there. That's, that's definitely the first and foremost smell that I am smelling is that wood. Oh man, but it's like, it's kind of like a, it's got like a spicy thing going on, like a, like woody pepper, like black pepper, but more like woody, kind of if the black pepper was smoked or charred, not like raw or fresh, right? But more of like a smoked charred black pepper. Oh man, that's great. Like roasted black pepper. Definitely it's a, no smell of like anything manipulated. No additives or nothing. Like it doesn't smell like, like funky like that. You are just getting, but it is like, it is slightly has like some hints of that cinnamon vanilla. For sure, I can see that. But more, it's just, yeah, it's kind of like a sweet wood. You are getting some agave on there, some cooked agave for sure. But it's, it's more of like a sweet wood with a smoked black pepper. Oh yeah, oh my God, that smells amazing. All right, I haven't touched it yet. That deep golden dark color and I'm about to now. Cheers, salud, thank you for being with us, all right? Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's spicy. It's definitely spicy. That black pepper is shining through. And like I said, it is kind of smoky. It is kind of charred. Um, you are getting a lot of wood on that, all right? Um, really just kind of punches you in the mouth at first. Then doesn't taste like at, hold on. At first sip, it doesn't taste, hold on. Mm-mm-mm.
Mm. Okay. On first sip, it doesn't taste like additives. It was really like just kind of um, like that that smoky black pepper, right? That wood, first and foremost. Um, kind of, they say medium char. It's definitely tastes like a little deeper than that. But uh, as I'm sitting here talking, as I'm going on, and it's not like overly sweet, but in the very end, the very back, right? As I continue talking, it is... I'm getting like a slight hint of vanilla. Um, I know like nowadays, like, you know, there's a lot of tequilas out there, unfortunately, using um, and overusing additives. Uh, but remember, this was like brought up back in 1994, um, before and for the millennium, right, to have available. And um, back then, you know, the, the the prominent of having additives wasn't as prominent, all right, for lack of better words. Um, it wasn't as common. There we go. Like, it wasn't super common, whereas nowadays, you know, anybody and everyone's making the tequila. Let's throw some uh, additives in there and make it sweet and taste like cake, and bomb, let's make some money. But I don't know. Let me take another sip. Mmm. It's so interesting because it is, first and foremost, up front, it just tastes like a like an aged tequila, right? But really heavy on the wood. You're getting some of those, those peppery notes. Um, but as I'm kind of talking at the end is then where I might question, all right, is there something in there, right? Is there a little bit of vanilla? It, it's not sweet. But it just has like, maybe even like a glycerin, vanilla-ish taste way back on the end. And you have to find it. Because if you're not used to it, you've never tasted something like that, you don't know what it tastes like, you're probably not going to um, experience that. But all the way in the back, it does have something that makes me question. But overall, again, nothing sweet. This is not a sweet tequila at all. But when they say, especially in their own description, you know, with some vanilla, some cinnamon, um, a barrel can impact that flavor, can impart that flavor, I should say. But all the way back in the very end, I don't know, there was something that was kind of curious and made me think like, maybe, maybe, maybe. If they told me no, absolutely, I'd be like, all right, cool, I get it, right? But if they said, yeah, I would understand as well as that flavor all the way back on the end. Um, overall, mm -mm -mm. Wow, wow, wow. I'm digging it, man. I'm definitely digging it. And um, again, just kind of so cool to have this as a centerpiece and uh, share this with friends and get them, you know, to say, hey, you want some tequila? Check this bottle, right? Check this out. They'll be like, whoa, what is that? And then you can kind of start that um, conversation of tequila, um, some of the history, right? Like, that's just a normal thing. Hey, guys, come to my house. I'm going to teach you the history of tequila. Well, my house for sure. But it kind of makes people um, curious. And then from there, maybe you can get them to explore something else, right? So just super cool, man. Corralejo, uh, Hacienda Corralejo. Definitely hats off to you guys for sure. Cheers, salud. And uh, super excited to finally have this in the bar at home. Uh, that's it, guys. We appreciate you being here with us for this very long video. I hope you found it informative. Um, if so, please hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. Thanks again for being with us and take care, everybody.